He sings that like a man. He sings it like he believes it. And you say amen like you believe it as well. Amen. That was powerful. That was good. I have enjoyed the service tonight. And you're, as a congregation, you're singing well tonight. You lifted up your voices, those songs, How Great Thou Art, and Can It Be, It Is Well With My Soul. Man, it's good to be on Favorite Sunday. For those who aren't able to be here tonight and you're at home, you're missing out. All right? I'll tell you right now, it's different here. It's different. You can hear it, but it's different in here. It's, you can touch it tonight. You can touch it. You have your Bibles open to Exodus chapter number 13. Exodus chapter number 13. Boy, thank you for your faithfulness, all those who are here who watch as well. Boy, God has sure been gracious to us the last few months here at First Baptist Church. You've seen the hand of God upon this, and we've seen folks saved, folks baptized, folks added to the church. He sustained us financially and uh, kept us in good health. God's been good to us. God's been more than good to us. He's been gracious to us. And I am so thankful to serve such a gracious God so glad to be here, part of First Baptist Church. I'm honored. I'm honored to be pastor here. And I appreciate you, your kindness, and you letting uh, my wife and I serve here. Of course, uh, me as a pastor, her not being a pastor, don't worry about that, all right? You won't come in one day and find out Pastor Doreen. There are some churches out there like that. This isn't one of them. You say, well, do you believe, do you believe that from the Bible, Pastor? I do. But the other thing is I don't want to split the church. You say, well, well, how'd you split it? Well, when she starts preaching, listen, <laughs> some of you walking out the back, she's got them some things to say. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. We are blessed, my wife and kids, to be here at First Baptist Church and to be in this ministry, and truly it's an honor for us, and we, and we don't take it for granted. We love it. We love it because, one, because God is among us. And if you don't believe God is among us, just come to a couple services at the First Baptist Church right now. God's meeting with us right now. He's touching us. Be touched by God. And I love the people here at First Baptist Church. All right, I love the God of the church, and I love the people of the church. And uh, tonight we're going to look at, again, probably the last message on our, our God is a consuming fire, but, but humor me, I may find a few more in here. We have a treat next week for you, but tonight, next is chapter number 13. Hebrews 12, 12, 12, verse 29 tells us, For our God is a consuming fire. If you've been here a few Sunday nights, you know where we're going with this, with this concept. He's a God that rekindles. He's a God that refines. He's a God that represents and requires. And He's a God that reveals. And tonight, we're going to find out that He's a God on which we can rely. And there's an aspect of the fire of God that shows the reliance we can have on God. Look in Exodus chapter number 13, verses 21 and 22. The Bible says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the fire by night from before the people. You see, God showed himself as a pillar of fire. We don't know exactly what that looked like, but let me tell you some things that it's not. When I was studying for this message, sometimes I'll read some commentaries just to see if I'm totally off base. Just to see, right, Brother Cranston, if I'm just in left field. You know what one, one guy said? They said, you know what, the way God will show himself as a pillar of fire and a cloud, that sounds a lot like a volcano, that children of Israel worshipped a volcano. Now, I don't know what the pillar of fire was exactly, except the pillar of fire, like the Bible says, but I for sure know it wasn't a volcano. i tell you that right now, just read your Bible a few times. This volcano moved in the desert, that takes more faith than the pillar of fire takes. Now, I know faith can move mountains, all right? Jesus tells us that. Maybe that's what happened. I don't think so. Someone else said this. Well, what the pillar of fire was, was obviously the children of Israel took these sticks and they wrapped a rag around the top and lit them and it appeared like a pillar of fire. <laughs> we'll find out a lot of things in heaven, but one thing you won't find out is God appeared on a, as a fire on a stick. That wasn't a pillar of fire. This thing, this thing provided light to over a million people. This was not just a fire on a stick. This, this fire, this pillar of fire provided direction. It wasn't a, a mountain, a volcano just moving along the dirt there. It was a supernatural event from a supernatural God. Our God loves to operate in the natural and the supernatural. 
But the Bible tells us in verse 22 that he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night. It was something that they could rely upon. Every night when the sun went down, guess what came out and appeared? You got it. Doesn't take a rocket scientist, pillar of fire. If someone were to wake up in the middle of the night and walk out of their tent, guess what was outside every single night in the desert? This pillar was always there. It was reliable. There are many things that we try to rely upon. The question tonight is, do you rely upon God? A simple question, but I believe that this particular characteristic of God reveals to us some provision of God in four different ways that God provided for the children of Israel that He still provides for us. That this, in a sense, this representation as a pillar of fire can be something that we can learn from and glean from. You see, in this world, there's sometimes we'll make jokes about things we rely upon. Like, you rely upon your car. When it doesn't work, you're unhappy. I found these four things that they say you can always rely upon. One is, they said you can always rely upon the thought that if you think you found a free parking space in a crowded Walmart, there's for sure a small vehicle parked inside of it. They said you can for sure rely upon that any computer item that is broken will instantly work when you take it to someone else to look at. My wife has experienced this. She goes, that was not working 15 seconds ago. What did you do to it? With that much, you know, maybe just uh, excitement in life. And I say, well, honey, I turned it on. She goes, no, you did something else to it. <laughs> Ladies in the office, same thing. How did you make that work? I, I don't know. I didn't do anything. Or how about this? You can rely upon that your kids always have to go to the restroom 10 minutes into a road trip. Count it. Write it down. Three, two, one. Bathroom break. Did you not go before you left the house? I tried. <laughs> well, you're waiting till we get there, right? Well, Dad, we're going 36 hours. That's right, we are. <laughs> but we can rely. We can rely upon God. We can rely upon the Son of God. We can rely upon the Word of God. We can rely upon God. Our God is a consuming fire. He's a fire upon which we can rely. And this pillar of fire was something reliable in the life of the children of Israel. There are four things that it provided for them, four characteristics the Lord's help will look at tonight. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Lord, I thank you for the service already and how you have touched us. Lord, you're meeting with us tonight. I pray you touch us now. Lord, I pray your word would have freedom and liberty in my heart and life. And Lord, as I try in some feeble way to communicate this truth, Lord, I ask that you would take it and you would do something powerful. That your spirit would bear witness in our spirit, Lord, that you would touch and change us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you'd show us an area or a different way that we're not relying upon you. Lord, may we look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I have four characteristics that we can rely upon that this pillar of fire, how it provided for the children of Israel. The first one is this. The pillar of fire for the children of Israel provided a path. They all start with P tonight, in case you're going to take notes. He provided a path for the children of Israel. Nehemiah tells us that. Thou us them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them the light in the way wherein they should go. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 19 says the same thing to show them light and the way wherein they should go Psalm 78 says the same thing in the daytime all he led, he led them with a cloud and all the night and all the night with a light of fire you see two thoughts about this path God cares about the path his children take you see, God used this pillar of fire at night and a, and a pillar of cloud during the day to lead the children of Israel exactly the way through the desert that He had planned for them. How, we, as we look at Scripture, it works. When the pillar of fire or the cloud began to move, the children of Israel, they were supposed to take their tents and start to follow it. So if it went to the left, what were they supposed to do? 
Help me here. If it went to the left, what were they supposed to do? Go to the left. If it went straight, what are they supposed to do? Go straight. If it went to the right, what are they supposed to do? Good. Brilliant. You're scholars, all of you. And when it stopped, what were they supposed to do? It stopped. So God led the children of Israel on the exact path, the exact path that he wanted them to take through the desert. The exact path. It was not accidental. It was not, it was not, oh, you know what, we got to get over there. So Moses gave, no, God led them step by step by step. Where they placed their tents, God planned for it. He gave them an exact path. God cared where they went, to the left, to the right, straight. And, and scholars have traced the kind of the path of the desert and said, boy, there was a quicker way to get there. And we always struggle with that. We always believe there's a quicker way to get there. God, I know what you want to do. Lord, I, I know where you want to go. I'll get there first. We strap on our big boy pants and our big boy car and go down this path and forget what Job says, but he knoweth the way that I take. We can rely that God has a path for them and that he revealed the path to them. It wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. You see, God had a path for them and he has a path for you and me that he'll reveal to us. You know, you and I need light because we live in darkness. We need light because we don't want to stumble and grope in the darkness. I read this interesting story about the will of God. There's a golfer that approached the first tee. It was a hazardous hole with a green surrounded by water. I'm not a great golfer, but I've been known to hit the links once or twice in my life. Apparently this golfer debated about if he should use his new golf ball or his old golf ball. As a golfer, if you're going over water, I usually use the old one. Why? So I still have my new one after the hole is done. Deciding the hole was too tre treacherous, the golfer took out the old golf ball and placed it on the tee. And, uh, and according to the story, apparently a voice from heaven said, Use the new golf ball. I looked around a little bit. And again the voice said, Use the new golf ball. So the golfer took off the old golf ball and put the new one on the tee. Get ready to hit that ball. And again the voice from heaven came and said, Take a practice swing. So, okay, he took a practice swing. And the boy said, use the old golf ball. <laughs> the will of God, nothing more, nothing less. You know, the Christian, a Christian can rely, can rely on the path that God has for them. You can rely on the path that God has for you. Well, I don't like my path. Sometimes you may not, but he knows the path that I take. I want to go on a different path. You can rely on the path that God has for you. You see, sometimes instead of relying on God, we rely on our past. Well, I've walked this way before. I have experience. I know how to get to the, through, through this situation. I'll rely on my past instead of the path. Instead of the path. And every time I rely on the past... I'm prone to failure. God has a path for me, just like He did for the children of Israel. Or we rely on our prowess, how smart we are. And boy, we start, to, we start thinking that we're pretty good at this life. We're pretty good on how to navigate this thing, and we're pretty good on making our own choices until we're not. Maybe you've ended up like I have, and you look around, and it's a mess. It's a mess. And you got no one to blame but yourself. We've relied on our prowess, our wisdom, and its foolishness at best, or we rely on our pain. Sometimes people choose the path of least resistance. We're like water. That one looks painful. That one looks easy. I'm going that way. Most people don't enjoy pain. There are a few people in life, a few interesting, odd people 
But most of us do not enjoy pain in our life. We tend to not, I know men get a bad rap, but all of us, we tend to avoid pain if we can help it. All right, and men, you know, we're accused of being big babies. But you know what? Sometimes there's pain in life and we just want to get out of that pain. If we're not careful, we'll make decisions based on what looks to be comfortable. There are times when we have to make uncomfortable decisions. That's called walking by faith. That's called following the Lord. But but Lord, that looks like it's a bad path. That looks like it's a harmful path. Lord, that looks like it's a painful path. Lord, I don't want to have to talk to that person because that's going to be painful for me. Lord, I don't want to have to make this commitment because that's going to cause me some discomfort in my life. You know, we can rely upon God as a fire because He has a path for us. But if we walk according to what the pain is in our life, we'll take the wrong path. We'll have missteps. We'll end up in a whole world of hurt. Sometimes it's because of our past or because of our our prowess or because of the pain. Sometimes we rely on our progress. Well, this is working out good so far. It's like the guy who fell off the 32nd floor of a building. The 16th floor, he was heard to have said, so far, so good. But in our life, we can do the same thing. Look, so far, so good. So far, so good. Look, I know, Pastor, what you're saying about the Bible, but I'm doing this way, and look, I've got it all. I've got a wonderful wife. I've got wonderful kids. I've got these vehicles. I've got this house. I've got this great job. I've got a whole lot more, and you said that my way wouldn't work, but it's working. So far, so good. So far, so good. Because one day, catches up, doesn't it? We rely on progress. Or we rely on our profit. What benefits me? Me first. I'll make a decision. I'll make a path. I'll choose a path that will benefit myself. You see, if we rely on our path, our product will be pathetic. If we rely on our path, the product will always be pathetic. You see, he knoweth the way that I take. We can rely on the path that God has for us. I found this quote. It's not original with me. But I thought it was, thought it was quite convicting. The quote says this, Most people don't want to know the will of God in order to do it. They want to know the will of God in order to consider it. Yeah, I had to sit down right then, inside. That's what we do sometimes, isn't it? Let me just be honest, that's what I do sometimes. Lord, what do you have? Oh, oh, that's not the answer I was looking for. That's not the path that I want to take. But Lord, thank you for that option. Is there anything behind door number two? Am I the only one? I know I'm not. I know I'm not. Pillar of fire showed the provision of God's path. And my friend, we can rely on the path that God has. You'll never be disappointed in the path that God has for you. I'll never be disappointed in the path God has for me. There is no greater path that I can walk on than the path that God has for me. Young person, there's no greater path than following Jesus Christ. There are those in here who are at the end of the path. Farther along than I am are some young people. And I know what you would say. Follow Jesus, would you not? Follow the path that he has. It is worth it and it will be worth it all. We can follow the path. The pillar of fire provided a path for them. And we can rely on that path. Something else the pillar of fire did. It was provision. The Bible tells us that it gave light by night. It was the flashlight, the night light for the children of Israel. I've got young children, they're getting older now. But there was a time when they're real young that these kids liked a light on in the room, in the hallway. 
They said, Mark, we leave the light on. Now, I don't like light typically when I sleep. My kids do. But what I think, believe, happened here is God knew the needs of his children. They needed some light at night in the camp, and you know what God said? I've got just a thing. How about a pillar of fire? You need to walk to your, your camp? You don't need a flashlight. I'll be the light for you. You see, God knew the needs they had before they knew their needs. What needs do you think you have that God doesn't know about? I've got some bills, Lord. I already know about them, my child. I've got some family problems, Lord. I already know about them, child. I've got some health issues. I already know about them, child. God knows the needs, but God provided for the needs. And we see that throughout the entire journey of the children of Israel. He provided manna and meat and water and warmth and covering and direction. We as Christians could add to that list every single day. What has God provided for you? Some of you, it's incredible health. Others, it's incredible finances. For others, it's incredible family. If we're not careful, we will look at what someone else was blessed with and be ungrateful for what we were blessed with. with. Well, Lord, you gave us a pillar of fire, but I sure would have liked a sword. Lord, you gave us a pillar of fire, and they did this, but we, what we really wanted was just some meat. Every single stage, it seems like the children of Israel are just grumbling and complaining and ungrateful. And we as Christians sit back in our, in our nice cars and seats and houses and say, oh, those children of Israel can't believe they're complaining. And yet, oh, a red light, I'm going to be late now. We complain about a red light. We complain about what God has done, and He's been so gracious to us. They got to look up every night and see that God provided for them. We can do that too. I look up and see the ceiling of the bedroom of the house that God brought for us. I look out here and see my kids. God provided for me. Church, suit, everything, everything. And the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. You see, when I begin to believe that God doesn't care about my needs, I begin to make decisions to be self-sufficient. Because if, we're, if we walk that path, we will then decide, God won't take care of me, so I better take care of myself. And we begin to become self-sufficient. And I find myself, you'll find yourself walking not by faith, but by sight. See, a Christian can rely on the provision. C.S. Lewis said, He who has God and many other things has nothing more than he who just has God alone. What do we need? God. But that's not all God gives to us. <laughs> that's the blessing of serving Him. That would be more than enough. Yet every day we can wake up and see the wonderful providing hand of God. I see a path. I see provision. And quickly, I see the protection of God. Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 14, when the children of Israel were first went into the, in the desert, pillar of fire appeared. The Egyptians came, the Bible says, to attack them. And you know what stood between them and the Egyptians? The Bible tells us the pillar of fire. Not only was the pillar of fire, was it a path, it was provision, it was protection. I love the verse in Psalm chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The Bible tells us when the pillar of fire was there that the Lord looked through the pillar of fire at the Egyptians. Now, it just, when I was studying, that just made me kind of chuckle. Because right? the Lord is up in heaven. He sees everything. But the Lord looked through the fire and looked at the Egyptians. I can see this fire and the Lord just looking through it. Look at those guys. One more day to the Red Sea parts. Enjoy your last ride on your chariot. The protection of God. When I was studying for this message, 
I could not help but think about the current times we live in. It seems like there is nothing we can rely upon except more bad news. Seems like there's nothing we can do except wait for the other shoe to drop. And we have the protection of God. There have been Christians who have been deathly afraid of COVID-19. I'm not here to make light of that. I'm not here to make light of that. But I'm not here to let you make light of the protection of God. We don't want to walk foolishly, but we don't want to walk faithless either. And I'm going to live as long as Jesus lives. I'm going to live forever. I'll live on earth as long as he wants me to. Now, I'm not going to be foolish. I'm not going to jump off the temple and, 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 and test the Lord, all right? That's what the devil asked Jesus to do. But, but we can't live in this fear. Jesus, God, is our protection. He's our protection. He walks before us. We're walking his path. He will take care of us. Have you ever been really close to something really bad? It's a little a few years back, I was driving to the church, driving a little Honda Civic. It was years ago now. Light turns green. My typical response in the green light is pedal to the metal, baby. Hit that thing and drop it, right? I didn't this morning. Thanks, Brother Mark. At least you're honest about that. I know some of the people do the same thing. Hey, don't judge me. I had a motorcycle. And it wasn't a Harley. This particular morning, I was coming to, to the school. Light turns green. For whatever reason, I'd say it was the Lord, I didn't go through the light. I just waited like two, three seconds. And all of a sudden, a waste management truck, right in front of the speedway there at Dixie and King, comes barreling through the intersection. Maybe you've been in a situation like this. My heart is beating about a thousand beats a minute. And I'm thinking, if I had gone, I was gone. Lord's protection. Lord, and you won't convince me that that was coincidence. You won't convince me that was just happenstance and I got lucky. No, sir, no, ma'am. That's the hand of God in my life. It wasn't my time yet. I'll live on earth as long as Jesus wants me to. Protection. Egyptians came to shut down the Israelites and God said, I got a pillar of fire here that says you won't do that. They can rely on that. And we can rely on the protection of God. One more characteristic will be done. There's a path... There's provision, there's protection. But the last thing, I think the most powerful description and characteristic. The pillar of fire showed the presence of God. It showed the manifested presence of God. Not only could they look out all the time and see it, not only would it lead them on the path they ought to go, not only would it provide for them some light and some heat on those cold nights, not only would it protect them from the Egyptians, they could look outside every single night and know, and know that God was here. You notice I didn't say God was there. God was here. He was in their camp. They didn't have to look over across the desert. Oh, God's over there. No, God's right here. And I'm so thankful for the presence of God. I think of Psalms chapter 139. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Christian, we can rely on the presence of God. Sometimes that's used as a negative thing. God's always watching you, but this is a positive thing. God sees through the shadows. He sees in the dark. He sees in the storm. He sees all the time. God is always seeing, and he's always with us. Emmanuel, God with us. I'm thankful for the presence of God. I'm thankful it's not only at church, but we've seen a touch from God here at First Baptist Church I'm glad he's with me when I head home tonight. I'm glad he's in my house. Is he in your house? I'm glad when I go to work tomorrow, he'll be at work, God's presence. I can be with him and he'll, he'll be with me all the time. And the Bible says, if I draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to me. You see, 
the pillar of fire, showed that he is a God that we can rely upon. What are you relying upon? If it's one thing I've seen since March, March the 14th, that Christians, talking to Christians now, will rely on a lot of things other than God. Other than God. They rely on something else for the path. They'll rely on something else to provide for them. They'll rely on a stimulus rather than God. They'll rely, they'll rely on a protection from somewhere else rather than God. And they've forgotten, it seems, that He's always with us. Pillar of fire. You can walk out, see this thing, and know that God loved him, that God cared for him. What are you relying upon? Anything else will be pathetic. Lord, I thank you for loving us. You've been so good to me. Lord, you're a good God. Lord, I pray that tonight you'd search us. Help us to know and understand those areas, Lord, that maybe we're not relying upon you. Just a moment, the instruments begin to play. We'll stand to our feet. My friend, I wonder if tonight God touched your heart. I wonder if maybe you've turned to something else. I wonder if you've relied upon your mind, your skill, Whatever it is, it's pathetic. Lord, bless this invitation. May our hearts be tender to you. And Lord, may we just look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Instruments play. Let's stand to our feet, head bowed, eyes closed, if you would. Lord, touch your heart. I encourage you to respond. is all I need. trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Perhaps you're online and you have never asked Jesus to save you. The Bible tells us we're all sinners. We've come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. It's life in heaven. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, we're all sinners. We've all done things that we have to answer for. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus came to earth and lived a sinless life. And he died on the cross, was buried, and three days later he rose again. He rose and showed his power over death and the grave and hell. The Bible says if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what does that mean? It means to believe that he died for our sins. We believe that if he, that if we trust him, he'll take us to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We'd save from pain for our own sin, save from going to hell, living a life apart from God. See, we can trust Christ. Maybe 
you joined us online that you've never trusted Jesus Christ. My friend, you can trust him tonight. You can pray a simple prayer like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. That he was buried and rose again. I trust in Jesus and him alone. My friend, if you pray that and mean that from your heart, the Bible says that you can be saved. It's not a magic in the a magic words that you say, but it's with the heart that man believes. If you never prayed, would you pray that now while you're at home, wherever you're at, maybe in a car or on a couch? Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, that he was buried and rose again. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and him alone. My friend, the Bible says that if you ask Jesus to save you, he did just that. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'd love to encourage you. If you did that, would you do me a favor? If you're in the auditorium, no one else looking around except me, would you slip your hand up? If you're online, they'll put a number on the, on the, on the screen. And Would you leave a message for me? I'd love to know that tonight you begin to rely on Jesus as your Savior. One of your night or if you're online, you say, Pastor, I did that. We'd love to be a blessing and help to you. We'll send you a free book to help you grow as a Christian. It's the best news we know. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son Jesus and for him dying on the cross. Lord, thank you that we can trust you and rely upon you and you'll never